Hey, this is Brent Arnold, and I want to talk about Flash Builder 4.6. So, if you have purchased Flash Builder 4.5, then you get the free upgrade to 4.6. So, if you are developing mobile applications, there's no reason you shouldn't upgrade because it's free. Now, the one uh, difference is you do have to download and reinstall Flash Builder. And the reason for that is Flash Builder 4.5 is built on an older version of Eclipse and in order to get some of the new functionality they had to move up to a newer version of Eclipse and so you have to uninstall 4.5 and then install 4.6. Uh, your serial number should work for it. Uh, shouldn't be too much trouble. Okay, why do we want to be upgraded to 4.6? Well, check this out. Notice this cool little screen here. Now, if you've been working with Flash Builder or Flex Builder, you know, they've had these little welcome screens for a while now. But uh, this one actually, uh, it actually does some good. First of all, you've got some cool new things here over here on the left. You've got this new create functionality. So you can uh, go ahead and click one of these and create a new project. So that's one cool thing. Um, it's got other stuff, you know, latest news. Uh, it's got references for Air Native extensions. I mean, it's really a, a great little, uh, you know, welcome screen. So don't just ignore it like we used to. Now we can make use of it. All right, so I want to show you some of the new things. Let's go ahead and click uh, New Flex Mobile Project. And this is going to bring up the dialog. Now, here we have, um, you know, this is very similar to what we've seen in 4.5. So I'm just going to say Test App and go ahead and click Next. And then uh, notice here that we've got Apple iOS, BlackBerry tablet, and Google Android. So now you can create for all three targets. So if you're going to target either one of these, uh, you can choose the different templates. You know, we have blank, view-based, and tabbed application. And I've covered these functionalities in other tutorials. So it's the same concept, but you'll notice that you've got the added Apple iOS uh, benefit. The other thing too is as you go through here you can set uh, various permissions and various uh, things that relate to each deployment platform. Uh, for now just uh, know that you can target all three and uh, that's the way to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and click finish and this is going to go ahead and create a new mobile project and it's got everything set up for us. Now. Again, these are some new features within Flash Builder 4.6, having the ability to target all three mobile platforms, which is a big deal. The other thing, uh, we've got this support for ActionScript native extensions. And once it uh, creates the new application, it opens to the first uh, view. For this one, we chose the view application. So again, these are all things that are very similar to what we've seen. Uh, but here we've got the chance now to work with ActionScript native extensions. Now to access that, uh, go ahead and click Project, and we're going to go to Properties. And then over here we're going to look at Build Packaging. And whenever we work with a deployment, so if, you have, if you're working for iOS, then here's where you enter information. So we enter, you know, the, the uh, signing certificate, the provisioning profile, uh, we indicate what we want to package, any entitlements dealing with uh, that's related to the app descriptor. But then we have this native extensions. Now, if you're going to use, and I'll show this in a demonstration for another tutorial, um, but now you have the ability to compile and create the app using the native extension by going through this dialog here. And you do that for each target uh, platform that you're trying to release for. So you would add the the, the A and E here, and then it would show up. Now, once you've done that, then you can go in and compile. And again, I'll show you how to do that another time. But the advantage is Flash Builder 4.6 now has that built in to support ActionScript native extensions. It's a great, great thing to have. The other thing uh, that you can do is with Air 3.1, we now have the ability to do what we call captive runtime. So if I go over here to Project and I go to Export Release Build, then in this same instance, um, I can choose which ones I want to build for. And then I can go and choose, you know, I want to sign the package for, 
you know, deployment. And then uh, notice here, uh, of course, it's asking for a lot of information, and I haven't gone through all this, but uh, I'm just going to briefly show you what I'm talking about. But if I go to Google Android option, notice it says export application with captive runtime. Those are the options, right? Also, notice here that it says application using the shared runtime. Uh, you've got the Amazon App Store and you've got the Android Market. So these are things that help you when you're deploying for Android if the user does not have the Air runtime for Android installed then you need to uh, it'll pass a it'll say hey go get the the Air runtime but if you're dealing with uh, different app stores or things where you don't want to worry about the Air runtime separately you want to compile with this captive runtime what this does is it allows you to export the apps in Air 3.1 which is the current version available for Flash Builder 4.6. It allows you to deploy the app so that it runs on the device without, it doesn't have to download the runtime separately. Now, the advantage to this is that you don't have to worry about a separate download, plus you can get it to work on different devices. For example, on the Kindle Fire, it comes with Air Runtime installed, but it only supports, what, Air 2.7, I believe? Well, Air 3.1 has a lot of features you may want to use, so in order to get that, you would use the Captive Runtime. So your Captive Runtime Air app runs on Kindle Fire, as well as the Nook Color and Nook Tablet. Same principle, they, they have a different Air Runtime installed. So, so there's a lot of advantages for Captive Runtime. Now the disadvantage is, that it's a little larger and it adds to the file size and adds on average 9, meg 9 to 12 megabytes depending on the type of stuff that you're doing and so that may be a concern but honestly I don't I don't think that's a big deal so again uh, these are some new functionality available to Flash Builder 4.6 and some new tutorials I'll cover how to work with some more ActionScript native extensions uh, I also want to show how to work with Blackberry Playbook and some other awesome stuff. Alright, thanks for watching.